Steve March Torme here. We are down at August Haven, a supporting partner of the Avenue. It's cold outside, but it's nice and warm in here, not just weather-wise, but the musical vibe. We have Rob Anthony, and we have John Wheelock in here. So, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. That's our lovely owner, Mr. Green. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, let's thank Jim Green for having us here. He, he gave me $7 to say that. That's well spent, well spent. So a couple more questions for you guys because I know that you have fans here, people that have seen you perform live, people that have seen you not just at Mile of Music but other venues around town. But there are probably some people here also who have not heard you before. So question for you. Um, we are all influenced by different musicians. Uh, for myself, since I'm so much younger than you two, it was probably a different group of musicians. But... <laughs> So I'm curious as to who, who are the musicians that influenced you two, you just separately, the people that you listen to that made you want to get into music? I suppose the reason I do what I do acoustically is uh, one of my favorite bands is the Eagles. I've always respected their harmonies. I always respected the songwriting. Classic rock songs like that. I like that, that classic Americana, acoustic-driven SoCal, as you would say. Yeah, yeah. SoCal acoustic. Well, that, that whole era is the Eagles and Linda Ronstadt and Jackson Brown and Flying mm -hmm. Burrito Brothers. Great harmonies, great songs. Yeah, I can't tell you why. Yeah. What about yep. you, John? Oh, Steve, I'm an old oh, soul, John. my friend. I'm yes, you are. I'm an old soul. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, I, I grew up, uh, my dad always had like Al Green on and James Brown and stuff like that. So that's, uh, I kind of vibed on you know, Motown things and grooves. So I just thought that was popular music when I was a kid, you know, so. That's what I was going to ask you, because you do come from a, a real R&B place yeah, in a lot of your indeed. music. You're, you're a much funkier musician than people even know. Yes. Drifters, Temptations, mm. Miracles, Smokey. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Say it, Steve. Diana Ross. That's, Say it, that's Steve. the stuff, man. That's the stuff. So there's, um, there's a segment of one of my shows I talk about the, the Motown writers. Yes. And <clears throat> I always imagined that if you tried to get a gig at Motown as a writer, you had to have a cool name or there was no way you were going to get a job there. Mm. So if, if a guy comes up, tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. So if a guy comes up to Motown and there's a receptionist there and she says, are you here for the writer's job? And he says, yes. She says, what's your name? And he says, Herb Glashute. She's going to go, no, that's not going to work here. So thanks, thanks for applying. And the next guy comes in and she says, what is your name? And he says, uh, my name is Jack Simmon. She goes, no, that just doesn't ring. But if a guy walks up and he says, and she says, what's your name? He goes, Bill Robinson. She goes, and he goes, no, hold it. Bill Smokey Robinson. Well, we have a desk for you right over here. <laughs> yeah. That's how I always imagine it. I think that's how it does my go. My name's Nick Ashford. Nick Ashford, you've got a desk. And I believe that secretary was Martha Reeves. I believe it was. Mm. She was going through a heat wave. That's right. So... <clears throat> Thank you so much. Say it, Steve. Say it, Steve. <laughs> and that's usually an introduction to the guy who I thought had the coolest name of all the Motown writers. And you can include marvelous Marvin Pence Gay, which is a great name, Marvin Gay. But this guy had a tremendous name. And he was like those guys. He was a great singer. He was a great dancer. He was a great writer. And he got in a very bad car accident. And he split his lip open, and it disfigured him. And he was embarrassed to be out in public and singing anymore, so he stopped performing. But I thought he had the coolest name of all, a guy named Percy Mayfield, mm. who wrote a certain song that was made famous by Brother Ray Charles called Hit the Road Jack. That's right. So that's who Percy Mayfield was. And I know you can relate to that. Indeed. Great tune, Hit the Road Jack, yes? Yeah. Say it, Steve. Say, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> That's going to become a saying, by the way. You're gonna, say it, Steve. Now you're going to hear that out when you're grocery Great. shopping. Oh, I can't wait. Say it, Steve. <laughs> say it, Steve. <laughs> say it, Steve. I'm in aisle 11. Say it. <laughs> you're here at festival. Did you find all the things you were looking for, Mr. Marshall? May? Say it, Steve. Say it, Steve. Say it. Uh, what do you guys see yourselves doing in five years? Whoa. Whoa. A curveball there. Any idea? I think or I'm going to be fantasize. Uh, what do you? What would you like to do? Yeah. I know I'll probably be traveling around the country in an RV. In an RV? In an RV. Still doing music? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how the cards unfold. Okay, here. John. Um, probably stocking groceries at festival when you walk by. And, <laughs> and what will you say to me when you I'll see say, me? Say it, Steve. <laughs> That's what I hope for in five years. 
Uh, do either one of you have aspirations to work with a symphony orchestra? Or is that just too big? I'd do it. I yeah. would do it, yeah, well, absolutely. One of my favorite albums is the, the Bill Withers, the Live at Carnegie. So when you get some strings and, mm -mm -mm -mm. and some stuff going, yeah, you're talking I'm to me. into that. You're talking to me. Mm -hmm. I'm Steve March Torme. This is Rob Anthony. This is John Wheelock. This is 91.1 The Avenue. We are here at August Haven, a supporting partner of The Avenue. We will be back. Say it, Steve. <laughs> Say it, Steve. Good God Almighty.